Hello and welcome to the video. Uh, today I'm going to break down my uh, car burnout scene that I created with Film FX and Cinema 4D. And I'm just going to show you some of the settings that I used and you should be familiar with the basic workflow of Film FX so you can follow along much better. So, uh, but anyway, let's get started. So let me show you a few things that I used in my scene here. So I have my Mustang model here and just uh, created a little animation of the rear wheels here to create some uh, uh, to create some motion here and um, actually I used um, I used a, 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 a time effector for this you can set the uh, time effector to object deformation and then just uh, you know manual keyframe the value of the axis you want to rotate along. Uh, so there's nothing special about this model. Um, then I created a a, uh, a blocking object so to say um, to uh, to make the smoke collide with something so it's not pathing through the car. And I couldn't use the actual car geometry because the, uh, the car is pretty uh, low poly actually it's hollow in the inside so and I didn't want to create new polys for that so uh, the easiest way to create just uh, a collision object for me was just uh, create this block here uh, let me show you so th this object uh, it's not not very beautiful but it's just uh, created from a basic cube and then I just modified the uh, points a bit to uh, keep up the shape of the car and build out the areas of the wheels actually. And after a few tests um, it worked pretty well. So uh, let me switch it off again. We don't have to see it. And then I applied a collision object tag from the FumeFX menu to it. And then I uh, created a a second object to emit the smoke from and this object is just looking like this um, let me show you Oops. sorry it's actually this so what I did is I created two tubes so to say actually they are pretty narrow like this uh, with the exact same size uh, of my wheels and I put them into a connect object and then just manu manually uh, animated its rotation you know and uh, let me bring that back into position make it invisible again then I uh, created an object source for my um, for my fume effects and applied this connect object to it and then I disabled the fuel because I didn't want to create fire I just want to create smoke and so in the smoke settings I set, a, set two keyframes so in the beginning it's there's not much smoke there's nearly nothing and then about a duration of maybe 25 or 23 uh, frames it's increasing the smoke to two so that's all I did here and um, the uh, most important part is the settings in my FumeFX object which is creating the look of the smoke so to say. So in, to illustrate what's going on here I'm going to open up the FumeFX parameter check. So in the left, on the left you can see uh, the values that I used and on the right you can see the default values. So I always like to use the GP, uh, GPU uh, viewport and I just used fire and smoke channels and <clears throat> when you uh, start to uh, when you start your simulation you can see what's going on very good and the general tab uh, you can see that I used a container of a, uh, of, a, of a size of 600 by 600 by 300 in height with a spacing of 1.7 and I keep it adaptive. 
you can see that I also changed the simulation quality to 7 because I found that was a bit better in the uh, in the results so it's always a bit tr about try and error to find the right settings for your scene actually for your individual project so and I used a different affection advection sorry always uh, you know double check it in your scene maybe you will you will create a better result with a different affection uh, method so they used advanced so and I also created a bit of turbulence and change its scale and level of detail a bit and I always and uh, and I also blocked the minus y uh, side so the floor is also a collision object so to say and then the um, other thing I changed is the smoke buoyancy and so and with this setting of minus 22 the smoke seems to be more heavy so it sticks more to the ground so on the other tabs I didn't really touch um, you just have to add your objects your scene objects to that list here to that object list to make fumefx making use of it okay so and then I started my simulation over and over again tweaking settings and in the end I was I, I find something that I was fine with and then it comes to rendering and I used redshift for my uh, rendering here and I will show you some stuff that I find out creating some decent smoke so first of all you have just have to create a redshift volume object and you can just apply it directly to your fumofix object so you don't have to create a redshift volume or create open open VDBs and load them in again, which will slow down the whole process. You can just directly render from Fumifix, which is pretty nice, I think. So I just load in the Fumifix smoke channel and I tried different settings with the scatter and the absorption. So these both of these settings are related to each other in a way. So as you can see, I tinted my smoke a bit, and then what I find out is um, to get a very good result because the smoke in my fantasy should should be you know like kind of transparent, transparent, not so thick, and therefore I changed the uh, maximum setting. So I actually brought it down. So let me give you a render of my scene here. Let me go to my camera and pick one of the last frames here. So there we have a decent amount of smoke created. And when I just uh, you know reset the setting to the default, which is one. Then you can see the smoke is much too thick. You can easily control uh, the situation by using the minimum and maximum settings inside of the redshift volume without recalculating new smoke over and over again. So let me bring it back like so. And that's the setting that I used. So folks, that was it. That was the breakdown of my scene. If you want me to do more stuff about Fumafix, just leave me a comment or a message and see you soon. Bye bye.